All right, welcome. This is Brian's at the Gate. This is our video blog for February 18th, 2019. Lots going on in the news these days. President Trump made a declaration of emergency, which we need to get at for a few minutes. And Amazon has decided to pull out of New York City, which has created all sorts of hubbub and fear on both sides of the ideological mm -hmm. aisle, I might add. So, I mean, Jeff, let's talk about uh, Amazon and the sort of the process first of how they mm -hmm. even got into New York yeah. and why you think that might corrupt the whole thing. Yeah, so so it's uh, with mixed emotions that I see what, what happened with respect to Amazon. And so Amazon uh, pursued for, for many months, uh, I think a couple of years, uh, yeah. to try and figure out their planned second headquarters expansion. And, and basically what they did was went to all these major cities and said, what can you give us? And, and a lot of people have concerns about that because uh, each one of these cities would offer ever more competitive uh, tax breaks to the firm right. uh, in exchange for the promised jobs that would come. And, and there's a lot of value added for a city to be able, to, especially for a politician in the city, right. to right. be able to say that they brought home the jobs <laughs> of those kinds of yeah. companies Absolutely. And, and so forth. But uh, New York City gave the largest uh, dollar amount uh, as compared to, say, uh, Virginia, Northern Virginia or Tennessee, uh, paid quite exor uh, exorbitantly, uh, about 50000 per job, as I saw. 50000 per job. Per job. That's what I, wow. I saw one number of that. It was about $3 billion in, in total tax subsidies, direct okay. subsidies All for right. that. Uh, and, and so the, the, the problem with that, of course, is that when politicians give special favors for an individual firm, it just creates tremendous opportunities cor yeah. for corruption. Yeah, absolutely. Because because uh, the politicians uh, can be paid off and, and they can hold Amazon hostage for that and so forth. And in general, even worse, it tends to lead to the other companies that are not given those special favors. Their taxes are actually increased to make up for it. So, so a couple years ago in Illinois, Illinois is one of the poster ch children for how this works. <laughs> uh, they raised taxes on all businesses in New York or in, in Chicago. Right. But pretty soon, you know, Sears and other, or, you know, Sears is a different story, but this was a few years ago. All these companies started talking about how they were going to leave yeah, Chicago. Sure. And so then they piece by piece gave special favors <laughs> to the few elite that appealed that gave the politicians kind of the, the money. And then the other companies were all stuck with us. Right. At the end of the day, they actually lost revenue from what they would have gotten otherwise. So so I really just don't like the, the corporate welfare that is given. And so I would join with AOC. Yeah, uh, I was, was going to say. Cortez, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and being against it, just not because of uh, the hostility to big business or rich business. It's because it was favoritism right. towards business. So I mean, Google, doesn't Google have a major building, I think, in New York somewhere? Other big companies managed to do this without massive tax incentives like Amazon was getting. So I'm not sure. It's obviously a wealthy company, profitable as far as I know. Is that right? It is. So they sure, surely have the resources to do this in sort of the good old fashion. Let's buy our property. Let's just pay the taxes and just get it over with. But I guess they're just going to use their leverage not to do it. Right. Yeah, I, I, it's it's hard to, to blame them for doing sure, what is right. legal. Right. Uh, it, it would be it would be great if our politicians could have uh, the courage to say no. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the cases because Columbus, for instance, was in the running at one point as, right. as a listing, and I was hoping and praying it, they wouldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. I, I'm not sure overall it would be a net benefit right. uh, for for the location. Um, but the flip side is, as we think about that, that that we can lament that, and we might even agree with uh, the progressive left on that. Yeah. But but here is the other part of this: Why did they leave? And by all accounts, uh, there were a lot of lot of protests out there. Uh, yep. The unions were unhappy. There weren't going to be many union jobs. Right. Uh, obviously, in the intervening time when they made the announcement, the election was held, and you had the the progressives become louder a voice, yep. if not actually in. Uh, in electoral results. So there was more uh, public pressure against uh, the, the Democratic candidates further on the left. Uh, so, so I don't know where they got cold feet, but uh, I'm reminded of the uh, overall adage that capital goes where it's welcome and stays where it's treated well. Uh, so so what we see is capital decide to flee. And I think Amazon probably made the wise decision but that frustrates the politicians because, you know, they have sure. plans on that tax revenue. What are they going to do? So uh, New York is especially problematic because its, it's tax climate is so uh, outrageously high. Uh, and link to this and then get your comment because this plays yeah, more to the right, politics of right, it, Mark. Right, and you can yeah. comment on that. Uh, so they had the shortfall and they were blaming uh, yeah. uh, in their tax revenue. The governor was complaining <laughs> that it was the, 
the deduction for state and local taxes was right. uh, no, now that it was capped at ten thousand dollars, right. forcing rich people to flee out of New York. Right. So, what do you think about that from a political standpoint? How does <laughs> how does how does New York handle this when their policies are yeah. leaving to people fleeing their uh, area? I, yeah, I mean, New York is losing people to Florida, North Carolina, Texas, South Carolina, Georgia. Uh, all those states are growing. If you look at census data, mm -hmm. for example, those states are growing rapidly. They're gaining members of Congress. They're gaining political representation, gaining in the business world. States like New York, California, Illinois, Ohio, to a lesser degree. Some of those states are, are struggling a bit. It's the great experiment of federalism, right? I mean, the whole purpose of having federalism is to allow these 50 states to be their own little laboratory mm -hmm. and let people move. You know, that's the great thing about America. States like New York are suffering right now, but it's, you hate to put it in such stark terms, but they deserve to suffer. They've made their policies. Uh, people are reacting rationally to those policies and they're going somewhere else. I'm not sure why this would be surprising to Governor Cuomo unless he's just convinced uh, people should maybe be forced to stay in New York because it's just so wonderful. I just don't know. But uh, it's just desserts in my mind and you hope maybe that New Yorkers will start thinking a little bit more critically about who they put in office, what kind of policies they put forward and to see whether they can grow in the future. But it's... Uh, in some ways, I think it's it's justice, and we'll see maybe if they respond. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit uh, different attitude over in Connecticut. Uh, what happened there politically, and how did that, how does that make a difference? Connecticut, what's going on in Connecticut? I haven't uh, kept up with it. I th I believe that they had a Republican that oh, won yeah, office, yeah, and yeah. it's it's getting a little bit Connecticut, better. Connecticut, uh, Maryland for, as well. For that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And such that uh, while it's a, Connecticut's just a real basket case fiscally. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it right. seems like they're getting a little bit uh, yeah. of improvement. Yeah, so. and those and those states that uh, that border New York and some of the others in the area, they're going to benefit from these things yeah. as well. So you hope that people will respond. But uh, New York is so heavily progressive. Mm -hmm. um, California is so heavily progressive. Can you imagine what it would take for those states to flip the Republican Party, especially the gubernatorial level? Mm -hmm. It wasn't all that long ago that Pete Wilson, governor of mm -hmm. California, right, presidential candidate, governor of California, uh, but it seems like ages ago now when you think of it culturally. I, I think, Mark, it was ages ago, and you had <laughs> dating you and I for hearing that. But, yes, I do remember it well. We think in historical terms. Yes, so, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for our students, certainly it was ages, <laughs> lifetimes ago. Lifetimes ago. Um, let's talk about Donald Trump here for a bit. Sure. Did you watch Did you watch his press conference? Do you watch such things, or are you more the let me read about it and just uh, make an opinion afterwards? I'm just curious. I, I am not one that can watch uh, – Either of those parties generally. Okay, all right. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I That's all right. Now, I um, I took a special interest in watch. Generally, I only watch State of the Union addresses, debates, some sort of significant event. Mm -hmm. I really can't watch news very much at all. It's just too – it's just disturbing. I, I just don't like cable news. Sorry. If any of you are cable news people, forgive me, but that's too just the way it is. It's too scripted. It's you know scripted. what they're going to say. That's right. You know what yeah. their points are. You don't really learn a lot, yeah. I don't think. Uh, but I watched his announcement um, – Typical Trump, you know, it was about a half hour late. He rolled out first 10 minutes or so. We're talking about China, Venezuela, I mean, everything except the declaration. Uh, he eventually gets around to the declaration. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting to listen to him. I think he undermined his own case, though, somewhat in that discussion. He said, we want to have it faster. Maybe I don't have to do this, but really the emergency is such that I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, then he, of course, made his official declaration of emergency. Uh, I'm sure, though, our, our, our listeners and, and viewers know lots of presidents have made these declarations. This isn't unique to Mr. Trump. P Barack Obama made these declarations. Uh, Jimmy Carter's first declaration is still in effect, for example. Sure. So these things are not all that odd, unfortunately, but um, it's still disturbing. At least it's disturbing to me. I mean, Congress has ceded mm -hmm. so much authority to the president to make these kind of snap judgments and then to steer resources based on these judgments. It's really remarkable. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's important for our listeners to know it's not disturbing simply because of the subject of it. No, and, that's and right. Many of us might right. be in favor of that's what exactly right. we would do with the money. Yeah. Uh, but as we've we've asserted, I mean, the election, there was an election. Right. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Trump's party lost the House of Representatives. That's right. And constitutional government suggests yeah. that, that the spending originates in the House. And when they are unwilling to appropriate funds, where does he constitutionally have the power to do this? Declaring emergency, yeah, yeah. And it's hard to make the case, but, but you know this goes back to him declaring uh, kind of national security yep. for the basis of tariffs against 
against Canada, really? Yeah. We're really worried about the Canadians <laughs> invading uh, for tariffs, but I mean, he'll use any straw to to make that point. And and this is this is politicians generally. Mr. Obama was even worse. Yep. Mr. Yep. Obama had more nine to nothing smackdowns by the Supreme Court yep. than anybody ever. I think Mr. Trump may yet join him in some yeah. of those nine to nothing smackdowns. Yeah, I think that's right. It's, it's a good point. I mean, it doesn't have much to do with the substance of what he's doing. It's the method in which yeah. he's doing it. And it's the order. Congress just legislated. Yeah. So this isn't, you know, I would be a little more sympathetic if Mr. Trump was making this choice after congressional inactivity, mm -hmm. refusal to take up the issue, maybe inability to make a decision, maybe lack of expertise, whatever it may be. But Congress just passed a bill. They just appropriated money for the wall. And then he declares an emergency because it's not enough money. Uh, you know, that doesn't smack of an emergency. That smacks of a political disagreement. And yeah, so, I right. yeah, I think the uh, it'll be interesting to see how the courts respond. As you know, the courts are typically really deferential to the executive's ability mm -hmm. to make pronouncements on national security kinds of issues. But this is a bit of a stretch. It involves a border. So I think that helps the president's argument to some extent. But the the actions coming so quickly on the heels of congressional decisions I think really undermines his argument here. I hope the I hope the court smacks him down. I really do. And again, I speak that just constitutionally. Just presidents need to be curtailed in this area. Mr. Trump, Mr. Obama, go all the way back. I mean, there's quite a lot of Republicans uh, that would make that same case. Yeah, that absolutely. We, that Republicans will yep. rue going down this path because no it, it gives uh, the possibility there. There will be other Democrats that own the presidency yes. in the future. Yes. And uh, Mr. Obama did a, a number of things that many of us criticized him on that were similar in vain. And this will just expand the uh, them to be able to say, hey, you guys did it. We're yeah. just doing the same thing you did. And the temptation's obvious. You know, you say, well, I like the policy. If you like the wall, sure. then sure, go ahead and do it. But I didn't like it when Mr. Obama refused to prosecute uh, you know, people who were here illegally. That's not how this works. You sure. know, either we have a constitutional republic, like you said, mm -hmm. where the rule of law is stable, and we have principles that endure from president to president, or we don't. And, and the other aspect that really concerns me is the separation of powers yeah. is there for our protection. Yep. Yep. If we an, enable an omnipotent executive, yep. that really puts us at risk when that executive is against us, yep. uh, which it, some days that will happen. And we can't, I mean, as much as it, uh, I wish we had public servants who would think long-term, it isn't in their political interest to think long-term. You know, sure. we, we have to think long-term, uh, but they're thinking just the next election right now, the next two elections. And so uh, they're making their choices based on what's good for them in 2020 and 2022. It's up to us as voters to make choices about what's good in long-term, which you know, I, I hate to say it, but that's not how our republic was designed. <laughs> it was designed to have senators, in particular, make sure. these kind of long-term sure decisions. Uh, decisions. And frankly, they're just not really doing that very well at the moment. Both parties. Well, they're all running for president on one party. Boy, it sure seems like it, doesn't it? It, it used to be that the senators, yeah. the senatorial position was not a strong right. position to run for president. Yet exactly that's right. exactly where we're going. President now. Obama seems to have broken that mold a little bit. Um and we'll see whether it continues. It'll be interesting to see if any of them get traction. Maybe just too many of them are out there for that to happen. But uh, it's going to be fun to watch. Well, uh, let me follow up yeah. with that because uh, I think the reason that we, you know, when I was a younger uh, a man, part, the reason why governorships were always en enabled as, as one of those stepping stones is yep. you had executive leadership Absolutely. to demonstrate that you were able to make that jump. Yep. That's right. And, and, and that was considered important. Experience was in, uh, important. And yet now we aren't there is it, it, are we at the point in our country where experience doesn't count at all? I mean, look at Mr. Trump doesn't have experience right. either. Mr. Obama, Mr. Didn't, Obama have didn't have experience. That's right. it, are yep. we all at personality? Is that the only thing that matters? And right now, the Senate's a great launching pad for personality, personality. right? You get on there and you make your speeches about judicial appointments and other things, uh, get traction in public opinion, build your social media presence, and then from there, you can make the jump to presidency. It has very little to do with qualifications. And uh, just speaking as a political scientist, uh, we categorize senators generally as show horses and workhorses, mm -hmm. right? The show horses are the ones who are just there for the cameras. The workhorses are there to get the nitty gritty yeah. legislative stuff done. The people running for the presidency are all show horses. Mm -hmm. They don't have a long legislative record. They don't have, they're not known for, for bills, right? Mm -hmm. You don't think a major law is connected to Cory Booker or Elizabeth Warren. Um, they've done things. I don't want to make it sound like zero, but... Uh, these are people who seem to have been running for the presidency for quite some time. And sure. typically the institution would punish those people, right? The Senate would sort of curb and move them out of the limelight. But uh, given social media and given television right now, that just doesn't happen. So it's it's interesting mm -hmm. to watch. A lot of fun. 
All right. Well, this is all of our time, I believe. Thank you for investing in us. If you have questions, please uh, send them to Matt and his marvelous mailbag. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.